just reading the first bit, it, it's a good chapter because it's like explaining why, why you would do some of this stuff. Why do you do it? <laughs> that, this, is, this has been kind of the, the conundrum I've had a lot through a lot of this. It's like, okay, well, why would you do that? Why would you choose that model type over another one and so on mm -hmm. and so forth? I know that that's more ISLR, but uh, but here maybe maybe there's some explanation as to why why you get certain outputs and so on. Right. So it's, this is exciting. So yeah, it, it helps us to understand which features were important and how they would change. And then this comes up at work here too because clients want to know why did the model do what it did. So it's uh, very relevant. Um, so anyway, uh, they talk about some of the tools you could use. So Lime, VIP, and Dalek. And I've worked a little bit with Dalek. I guess we call it Dalek. Daleks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so it makes the distinction. VIP functions when we want to use model-based methods that take advantage of model structure often faster. And then Dalek is just kind of your cross the board, treat every model the same. So you kind of do like an apples to apples thing. So then they go back to um, our previous chapters, 10 and 11. So 10 was resampling. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, are you sharing uh, anything? Do you see that. or? Oh, no, wait. I don't see oh, it. no, it's not on there. <laughs> so that, <right? laughs> I do that. I do that sometimes. Sorry. So anyway, yeah. So they talked about um, why you'd want to do it. And then they talk about what software. So they say you could use Lime, VIP, Dalek. They don't really talk about Lime much. We can open that up real quick just to kind of get an idea of what it is. Um, oh, I've seen these hex stickers on people's computers. Yeah, I did on my previous <laughs> laptop. Since I've yeah. had a new job, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to like sticker up my laptop, but yeah. Oh, I went. Uh, <laughs> so I put on something else. So, oh, so this is not good. They're using the Iris data set. So that's not really exciting. Um, let's see. So probability explanation. Probability is one for all of these. That's exciting. I guess I kind of see why they didn't really spend a lot of time on this. Okay. What, what's so, the, what's anyway, the, what's yeah, what's I might the go back to it to, later. Yeah, what, what's the, the function they use for? Lime. They're, com they're comparing models, right? So you're, right. you're getting summary statistics of some sort and being able to say, that's the best one. Right. So this is interesting. They they have even like a shiny app. So that's kind of cool. Oh, for like uh, NLP. For tech stuff. Yeah. So let's see what's going on here. Strawberry. Oh, so this, this shows you. Um, kind of the highlighted strawberries there. I don't know why they say candle taper. Okay, so that's why they say they might have thought that from these things, but and then I'm not sure why they yeah, so so that is lime. Yeah, so it just says explain. So you create train your model, you build the explainer, then you do explain. And then hopefully this so supports contradict. So clearly pedal length and width are important in deciding if something says Satosa. Yeah. So we'll hop back to here. So, so they say they often choose. So VIP, if you want to use model base, so the Dalek is um, if you want to use, and we can open these later if we want to go to them. We already, yeah, VIP, Dalek. So, so we go back to our old house model. Here's our linear model. Do you model know what they mean by model agnostic methods? I think it just means that it treats every model the same. So it doesn't use any special knowledge about how the model works to okay. make its decisions. Yeah, so you could do kind of just compare anything. So here's what, what kind of results we got. Looks like random forest is tighter for one thing. Mm -hmm. So, so right there, I would say, oh, go with that. But it also says, yeah, let's take a look at what these uh, Dalek will tell us. So um, let's build the explainers. So there's a package called Dal Extra. 
which oh which supports tidy models so that's helpful that it works nice with tidy models um so here's things that we all remember so we talk about our features neighborhood living area year built building type latitude longitude and we take our training data and select that and then we build an explainer so we pass it the fit from the linear model the training data what was our result a label and then same thing for random forest so there, here it's there not, is, yeah, yeah there, there's not there's not the output for for this i was curious to see uh, if we could see the the output sort of this um, those things yeah unfortunately i just read this i didn't actually run it i don't know if either of you guys had a chance to run it no i didn't have a chance the, 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 we can uh, i don't think it, it, it would take uh too much see i would be interested to run it with verbose equals yeah. true and see what all it tells me um so yeah so it talks about so linear models like one of the nice things about them is they are straightforward to interpret um but sometimes it can be difficult yeah so if you like have a bunch of splines and interactions it, it might make less sense um so let's see we could then go we could quantify global or local models in terms of basic predictors or derived features so that was interesting to me because when you think about things like dimensionality reduction i wonder if then you know your understanding of the model goes out the window but apparently you can actually get around that as we will see so local explanations give information about a single explanation observation sorry so they say let's just pick this house it's an older duplex in north ames so you can see it's got 1040 living area built in 1949 and that's where it is actually located so to do that you do this predict parts you give it the explainer and your observation and then it tells you what contributed to the model so the intercept that, that's, that's interesting that that's very useful so you can yeah yeah, yeah definitely so the intercept contributes to everything because yeah you're that's where you start and then there's all these other things that were factors so i think they're all kind of bringing it down right so it was kind of an old house that brings it down not a huge house the building type three duplex not great And then it says the model breakdown explanations depend on the order of the features. Oh, so how you define them in the model? Yeah. So that was kind of interesting, but then they say let's let's choose the order for the random forest to be the same. So I wasn't sure what they were saying. We could change the relative importance. So well, I guess I mean they're they're different because it's a different model <laughs> for sure. Uh, so we took the explainer from the random forest. And so it just says, pass the order that we got from the linear model. So then you see, yeah, similar because, you know, they're bringing it down the 1040, the three, the year built. They're not the same values, but, you know, the magnet or the direction is certainly the same. So yeah we could use the fact that these breakdowns change based on order to compute the most important features over all possible orderings and unfortunately the computer is doing this we're not doing it um so this is the idea behind the shapley additive explanations where the average contributions are computed under different combinations or coalitions of feature ordering so it says let's do that for our duplex and then i guess this is just kind of a parameter you can pass how many orderings are you going to try so they say let's try 20. so they say predict parts and then the type is shap and then this is how many orderings um apparently the daleks a good package it's got all these plottings that you could do but they decide to build their own That's and one does. What's that? As one does. As one does sometimes. I mean, I'd be honest. I, if, it, if I could do a plot, I'm going to do the plot. But yeah, if you're. 
I guess if you're presenting, you you can like really tune things and make them extra pretty. Go go with ggplot. Um, so what? Well, let's see if we kind of get a sense of what they're doing. So group by variable, that makes sense. Uh, mean contribution, and so they reorder this by the absolute mean value. So you can see how it just kind of increases over time, or over as you go, <coughs> go top to bottom. Um, GD plot contribution variable. Uh, what's going on here? Distinct dot variable mean val. This is to get the columns, I guess. And then they got the box plot. So there's like a lot going on in this plot. It's pretty cool. So you can see like the year built is a pretty strong thing. It's like pulling it way down. Living area pulls it way down. Duplex, not helpful. And it's interesting that the, uh, the location is contributing. And then I guess North Ames is kind of a good neighborhood because it's pulling it up, but yeah, it's not, not enough to make a big help. So then they say, okay, we did that for that neighborhood. Let's look at a bigger one family home in the Gilbert neighborhood. So we'd expect that to be probably, you know, higher thing and it is. So they do, again, they have the explainer RF, the observation, the type of shap and then B is 20. And then you get, again, the living area helps the year built. Apparently not the best neighborhood, but not terrible. And then, yeah, there's these location contributions. Then one family is kind of desirable, so that, that boosts it up. So unlike the duplex size and age, so yeah, those are the big factors there. So yeah, so if you showed this to somebody, yeah, I feel like that's very intuitive. Then you say, okay, yeah, that's, the reasons are very large, recently built. Kind of recently, that's before my daughter was born, but yeah. It's more recent than 1949. So, so that's that. So global explanations help us understand the most important in driving the predictions over the whole training set. So the, the examples we looked at so far were just, why did it predict it for that individual case? But then this is just saying, how do you look at the overall big picture? And then they talk about the um, way you could do variable importance is to permute the features. So basically they just are kind of randomly shuffling all the values. So you kind of make them nonsense. So, so if the nonsense values give you horrible predictions, but the you know, real values give you good predictions, then that's a pretty good indication that that variable is probably important. So I, so I believe that's what's going on right here. And then that's Bryman, and he's the guy who created random forest. He and uh, another researcher. Um, let's see, do we have references? I thought this was going to open an actual paper, but apparently not. Yeah, it opens no. the footnotes. Where the <laughs> the footnotes. I think yeah. it's the dash 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 two thousand one random forest ones, but. Yeah, I think I think yeah. There's maybe there's something that's just missing, but you, so that's apparently part of the random forest paper. Um, let's see. So so that's the idea. So for this, we use the model parts function, and you have to choose a loss function. So they choose the loss uh, root mean square. Yeah. And so again, so if you're me, you probably just say plot. But <laughs> if you want to be fancy, they were very helpfully show us how you can make a, a very nice, pretty plot. And then root mean squared error after permutations, higher indicates more important. So yeah, so if you shuffle the living area, I guess your model the error goes way up. So that indicates that living area is probably important. Similar things going on with year built neighborhoods, pretty important. And then, and then you can see kind of like there's the difference between the linear and the random forest. It's interesting, they both seem to indicate like longitude is more important than latitude. So longitude is what, east-west, and then latitude is north-south. So it's kind of like one of the sides of town is maybe bad. And then, um, yeah, you can see building type down here. Um, oh, and so the, the neighborhood, move, neighborhood moves so much between the two types 
Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, that kind of shows you that um, the yeah. So your linear model is pretty reliant on the neighborhood. I I guess is a way to think of that. But apparently, the way the random forest is working, it's getting you know enough information from this maybe that it doesn't need to concern with the neighborhood as much. Mm. So the dash line is just kind of if you have the full model. So if you have everything in there. You're gonna get your air here, and then as you shuffle them, you know they'll they'll jump up. So so again, I, I feel like that's pretty intuitive. Anybody? So so is this is this kind of what you would call like a sensitivity analysis to understand what the importance of each variable is? Well, yeah, I mean it, it certainly tells you, yeah, that you know um, there's information in there, certainly helpful yeah. information. Because if you if you turn it yeah because if you turn it into noise you end up getting this big error. So that was kind of how they decided to to figure that contribution. Also yeah. kind of interesting. So like the boxes are wider on the linear model than the random forest. But we saw that dispersion relative to the uh, to the line. Right. On the on the original graph at the top, and that because. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're going back to here. That one. Yeah. So in general, the random forest just is 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 more certain, right? I guess is kind of what's going on. So that's that's, yeah. I think that's probably what's going on there. Um, yeah. So the random forest is really looking good so far <laughs> compared to the linear model. Um, and yeah, and you have ways to demonstrate that. So. Let's see. So there's interesting information. Oh, neighborhood is important in linear with the interaction splines, but the second least support for the random forest, which we noted. Um, okay, so then they have building global explanations from local explanations. So the single observation is the Shapley additive ex ah, explanations, and the global model explanations is the probutic features. So, okay, so it's possible to build global model by aggregating local model with partial, so this, this one, yeah, this actually came up at work, partial dependence plots. So partial dependence profiles show how the expected value, so like the price of home, changes as a function of a feature. So, so here we're getting kind of more of a functional relationship. So as the year built changes, how does the price change? And the way we do that is with this model profile from Dalek. And yeah, so it says we can compute it for 500 of the observations. So again, you could choose this, how many observations you want to look at here, 500. Um, and then the variable is the year built. And then again, they have a nice function. And I feel like I kind of should go back and read this and understand it a little better. So yeah, here they're making the label. They have this X variable in the Y hat, which makes tons of sense. Um, so data is as tibble CP profiles, X, and the group is the IDs. So these are pretty standard ggplot things. Um, so N distinct. So if the colors is greater than one, do this, but otherwise do this. So yeah, so their default color is midnight blue, I guess. Um, so this is pretty interesting because it's saying, okay, we can see the nonlinear behavior. And I think, yeah, as we did, like maybe we did 500. So we get just tons of different lines, I think is what's going yeah. on. I, I tried this this bit. Oh, I see what's I happening. Yeah. But yeah, I so, would be able to, to replicate it exactly as the same. So mine is more, I had to make a little changes. So my Oh, you changed, you changed, you did a different plot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you want to show it? You can show what you no, did. No, no. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I need to, to look at it. But oh, you're still say, looking at it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I see, mm, I didn't, didn't find the same. It didn't come out the same? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I guess that's what's going on here. So, so, so it's plotting every little individual one, and it's using the alpha 0.05. So they're all kind of, you yeah, know, very light. Pink. 
Yeah. And then for the main one, it's using alpha <laughs> point eight, so it's much darker. So so that way you get kind of the overall picture, and they all kind of follow the same trend. Newer the house, the the more expensive it is. Less important if you go back beyond, you know, nineteen fifteen, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. There's yeah. a big jump in the eighties. Yeah, look at that. And another one in the. Uh, what would that be? Nine, 90s or 2000s? Pretty sharp, yeah. And then there's also like some activity here, like in the 50s. Yeah. That's like, you know, World War II happened. World Everybody War II comes happened. back, builds their yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so okay, that's interesting. So let's see. So sale price is different. Yours is mostly flat. It arrives about after 160. Um, and you could use it for other features, but also groups. So here they're using the building type. Um, so they're saying, let's look at living area as our variable. Building type is our group, and we'll choose a thousand. This plot's really nice, one of those nice one-liners. Yeah. But you still get pretty, a uh, pretty nice-looking graph, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you just kind of see how the different building types are. Obviously, you know, the townhouse is up here, and then the one family um townhouse e whatever that is um and then down at the bottom is the two family thing for two family uh yeah so and it, yeah it's interesting it goes there's up at around what 800 something like that it starts going up and then like under 3000 it's just like it flat again so we have the option for using that so again Thank God, you can do a lot of stuff out of the box. Um, but we can facet to visualize if they change differently. Mm. So here they did facets. Facets are great and ggplot. Part of the reason they're great is you can see things like this where we did our sample and, and like clearly there's a lot of one family examples, Very not so much groups. of the others. Yeah. So that's, that's captured a lot better here. Whereas if you look at this, it's all, mashed together mm. so that's interesting um okay so there's not one right approach more than one way to do it and they say okay so we highlighted good options and we point you to Vitek and Berzikowski and Molnar for further reading so let's look real quick at what these are although it's probably going to get us just down to the bottom yep Yep, so, so the first one is explanatory model analysis. So apparently this is just a, a real good book, right? Book. And then Molnar, yeah, so Molnar is another interpretable ML. So let's, let's follow further. So yeah, I feel like this is gonna be a real good one to look at. And the Dr. Y guy, I think he's the, or yeah, these people are the ones that put together the Dalek package. So I think, yeah, this would probably be a real good thing to, to put on yeah. your reading list. Right. We can ask for, I don't know if they, they did set up a, a book club. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah no, actually, yeah, that's a good point. We could probably add yeah. one of these to the queue if people want to go further. And so that's that book. And then there's also this one that you'd have to buy. <laughs> so. Yeah, making black box models explainable. Um, I feel like I feel like Christopher Molnar is is a name I've heard. Let's see if I can recognize him. Oh, Twitter.com is blocked at my work. Oh no. <laughs> I have to figure that out later. So he talks about Shapley values in Lime. And he's got this cute mole that's digging around. So that's cool. Um, so let's see. Okay. Oh, then we go back to beans. <clears throat> this part was interesting to me because they say we saw great results for partial least squares, but then you say, well, you've uh, kind of transformed all your variables. So how do you know what that even means at that point? Um, and they show you. So they say, okay, remember we, we compared them and then we had the RDA fit. And so it's saying, Take that, and then we take our training data. So it's so it's taking it before it does all those transformations, and it's passing that in, it's passing that. 
And so then there's this ggplotimp function. So this is really cool to me that even though we did all that dimension reduction, we could go back and see what the original variable was. So it's saying shape factor is like super important, roundness, four is important, one is important, and minor axis length. Other things less so. So that, so to me, that was pretty cool. Now, yeah, so the measures of global feature importance incorporate the effects of all the PLS, yeah, all the PLS components partially squared, but in terms of the original variables. So then it says, yeah, it says, what is that shape factor for the really important thing? And it's the area over the major axis times the minor axis. So yeah, that tells you quite a lot. And so these are the most important bean characteristics. So again, we know a lot about beans now. Um, so this was actually a little bit of a short chapter, but I mean, a lot of these things, they're kind of nice because again, you just take your model and you're just you're just passing it to a function and you get your output and then you get these nice plots. So yeah, again, good things to have in the toolkit. So I kind of blasted through that, but uh, anybody have any additional thoughts or? I don't have any major. I don't have any major thoughts. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I kind of. That has nothing to do with your explanation. I think I'm just tired from yeah. the week. <laughs> I hope I didn't blast through it too fast. Like no, 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 no. I think okay. it was good. Um, yeah. So, so the collection of tools that we talked about today are really just about taking a model object and <clears throat> interpreting the output of it. Yes. Saying which variables are the most important? And trying to trying to help you explain why those variables are important. Yeah, I think that's when it's not so obvious. Right. Like this data set, it's kind of obvious what's important. Right. Um. I say that, but I, you know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily know either. But you know, yeah, there are location, interested. location, location, right? So, yeah, location, location, location is, is definitely yeah. And then, but also, there. yeah, year built, and then this year. one's a little bit obvious. Yeah, what what size is it is going to be a factor yeah so yeah and then the other house it's like a lot more yellow yeah from the fact that it's like more Bigger. than twice the size more and recent. much much newer yeah. the latitude thing i still don't know because you'd think that would be encoded in the neighborhood yeah i guess it, it's a model interpretation yeah and then they seem to kind of contradict each other right because this yeah. is pulling down and this is pulling up so i yeah i guess it has to do with how the model ends up yeah like longitude and latitude to me seems like a weird thing to use for housing models yeah yeah, you feel like you'd get more information from neighborhood, right? Cause yeah, because you can nice have, to... like, really nice places next to, like, not so nice places, you know? Mm -hmm. And the latitude and longitude will be almost the same mm -hmm. unless you go out, you know, three or four decimals. Yeah, this is true. Um, that number is not going to change a ton. Yeah. So they talk about the difference between the global and the local. So the local being for, you know, why did this? And I guess that would be good if you get some prediction that's really off, right? You could pass it in and say, why is it really off? <laughs> so yeah. that might give you some insight into what's going on. And then just overall, just why did it do it? Yeah. So yeah, so I wonder why the linear model decides neighborhoods much more important. It could be just how, linear model works. I don't know. It's able to get more information out of it. Well, as you said, uh, it's able to tease the the variance out of the random forest is able to tease the variance out of the other attributes more, maybe. Right. Yeah, I think that's I think that's ultimately what it ends up being. Yeah. Because maybe there's like a lot of neighborhoods that are pretty much the same, but then there's like, you know, certain areas of town that are really sketchy. So if you end up in those real sketchy areas, you can, yeah. 
I've only been to Ames a few times, and uh, I don't remember. I'm sure there were lower income areas, but uh, I, I don't remember like any of it being sketchy. <laughs> Iowa, yeah, university town, probably not too sketchy. I mean, I'm in I'm in an Indiana university town, so I, I kind of would envision it being much like my own little town. And yeah, there's, yeah. there's not really there's not really much uh, crime to speak of. Um, yeah, obviously crime everywhere, but yeah, the lower income areas are probably yeah, full yeah. of students. <laughs> Things that yeah, and then you know we unfortunately we have issues with homelessness and yeah. Some yeah. drug issues which i guess are everywhere but yep. yeah it's i don't know all right so so anyway some more tools for everybody's toolkit i can think of some examples of where i i would like to use this and yeah it's just real nice to, to know about these tools so well, that's cool. my closing thoughts yeah <laughs> so. thanks for running through it steven hey no problem everybody have Thank a good you. week and yeah uh, you too can. Take care, and uh, we'll see everyone next week. All right. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Ciao.